OK. Merci. All right. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this webinar event. This is where we'll, we'll be officially uh, presenting the newly redesigned Integrated African Health Observatory. So I just want to introduce uh, our team. So we have uh, Dr. Serge Bataliak is here with us. He will be going over, uh, he will give some opening remarks and um, do a presentation or an introduction to the Integrated African Health Observatory, providing a little bit of background. Then we'll share a video presentation. And our panelists, uh, Dr. Benson Droti, who is the team leader for Health Information Systems, uh, will talk about the data aspect um, that is captured by the observatory. Regina Titiofe will talk, is an information analytics officer in, in the observatory team, in the DAC team, and she'll, will, she will discuss analytics. And finally, Dr. Dr. Joseph Okibunor, will, who is the team lead on research development and innovation, will take us through the Yahoo's capacities or um, what, the, uh, what the observatory has to offer in terms of knowledge and research. And we'll have a moderated discussion where we will take, all, we will take your questions and, and answer them um, as a panel. And then uh, Serge will take us, will close, will close the event. So uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. We hope that the platform and the connections work well. If there are any technical issues, we ask that you kindly email uh, Jadis Mangimba. His email address is posted up there. We can put it again in the, in the chat. Interpretation in English, French, and Portuguese is available. So we ask that you click the interpretation button and then select the channel that you would like to listen via. We ask that you please reserve the Q&A function on Zoom for questions regarding the presentation, so content-specific types of questions. And then if you have, if you have any, oh, I'm sorry, is my screen visible? I need, Léo, est-ce que tu peux voir, est-ce que tu peux voir mon écran? Can you see my screen, Leo? Hello? Oui, Aminata, ton écran est bien visible. Bien yes, visible. Aminata, your screen is visible. Thank you. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Just wanted to do a quick check. So, uh, yeah, so we ask that you use the Q&A function for content-specific questions, and then the chat, uh, the chat function for any technical or logistical issues that you're facing with the webinar. Uh, our team will be monitoring both the Q&A and the chat throughout, throughout the session. This session is also being recorded in the three languages, so those will be made available to you, and your attendance is consent to be recorded. Slides in the three languages, so, um, again, English, French, and Portuguese, and a link to the video recording will be shared in due course after the session. Uh, this will be done via email with everyone who registered. So I'll quickly go over the objectives before I hand, uh, I hand over to Serge. So the, the first objective is to officially present this newly redesigned integrated African Health Observatory, share some background and timeline information for the development of the observatory uh, in the African region, share the broader perspective on health information that the IAHO promotes, discuss ways in which the WTO Regional Office for Africa supports countries in the establishment of their national health observatories with validation and verification of data, as well as appropriation and institutionalization. So those are the, the three common steps. Discuss how the Yahoo contributes to responding to a number of critical health information issues. And also we want this to be the starting point for the development of a community of practice. So over to you, Serge. Merci Aminata. L'Observatoire Intégré. Thank you, Aminata, the Integrated African Health Observatory. Uh, contains uh, uh, 
aspects of uh, intelligence, the big innovation is uh, that not only that it hosts the uh, Africa Health Observatory, but it also hosts the 47 health observatories in Africa. So it's a platform of, for sharing, for knowledge, a platform where we have gathered uh, information, key information that have been analyzed and summarized and that are shared on this platform. The uh, data as uh, we uh, treat it uh, today, uh, we are talking about uh, statistical data and knowledge and proof. There is uh, also a real time uh, presentation on what health is today in Africa. We are going to present uh, elements of information that uh, was agreed by the member states of WHO. Next slide, please. We need to remember that historically, and as far as the background is concerned, the need for an integrated platform for health information was a request from the Minister of Health in the region uh, between 2010 and 2019, and that was the officious launch of the African Health Observatory and then we had national health observatories. But in reality, we noted that health information in our region is fragmented. And uh, sometimes there was a platform missing so that information would be accessible. So to have all the various elements of uh, health uh, data, we have uh, statistics, we have analysis, and also knowledge as to uh, sharing lessons with each other. So this is a direct response to this need. And it interconnects uh, the regional level the country level and sub-national level. The aim is to have reliable data in African countries with the elements that we have mentioned, data, statistics, analytics, and knowledge. And there is also a, a tool for inputting data and everyone can consult this uh, to see what has been done in the region. Excuse me, I People say they can't uh, see the screen properly. Please uh, give me a minute to sort that out. Thank you. Je vais arrêter de partager. I'm going to stop sharing and start again. Okay, um, Serge, do you you want my screen? Can you see my screen, Serge? So as I was saying earlier, there was uh, some progress in uh, 2010, the regional uh, uh, Africa uh, office launched uh, the African Health Observatory. And in 2012, the member states uh, approved this launching. In 2017, eight countries uh, in the region started developing national observatories in 2019, there was a new resolution to encourage the regional office to develop an integrated African health observatory. And in 2020, we had a webinar 
to uh, handle uh, in-house in validation so that in 2021, we are able to present the redesigned integrated African Health Observatory. And there are already 24 countries that have engaged in this uh, redesigned observatory. Just as a reminder, the data sources of the observatory, we have a population based census surveys, civil registration and vital statistics, institutional resources, we have national health information system, tools for collecting data, data from services and programs and other resources. And uh, from an international point of view, different resources, uh, national and international NGOs, international organizations, including WHO and external programs and donors. The idea is uh, to show that uh, the observatory has a very varied data sources. Let us remind ourselves, however, that data from surveys are essential and they inform more than 50% of indicators. So for us, this is a data source that is very, very important. Next slide, please. We We insist on the perimeter of health information. Uh, we had the habit of concentrating on statistical data, but over and above uh, statistical data, uh, civil registration, uh, survey results, uh, etc. There are there is analysis that allows us to have a point of view that enables us to understand what is going on much better than before. The uh, data linked to a forecast also. Even better, there is much knowledge in our region, but uh, sometimes uh, this knowledge is not widespread and is not uh, exposed. Uh, so now we have a platform that we will be able to explore for a sharing of best practices, as well as uh, uh, several uh, evidence-related items. The technical architecture was designed to allow all countries uh, to have um, a complete a description of the observatory and also to access much health information for the region. There is a process that enables us to consult elements of information. And this is to ensure all users that the information available to them is a truly a processed and obeys a governance principles. This slide presents the home page of the Regional Health Observatory. We have access to everything concerning data and statistics. We have access to analytics, and we also have access to knowledge and ev evidence as well as, as scorecards that allow us to follow up the work program of WHO. So it's a, a set of resources that enables different or various states that are useful for implementation of certain programs. We have uh, access to national health observatories. 
and uh, therefore we can know what is happening in your country in terms of health. The next slide will show what the screen looks like. We took the images of a country where on the home page, we have uh, access to key information and uh, you can go more into detail using the various menus that are displayed. It is also uh, possible to develop uh, uh, sub-national profiles and uh, therefore have information on uh, health districts in various countries. To date, we have about 24 countries that have committed to the process of developing their national observatory through the IAHO. AFRO provides a strategic and tailor-made support to each of them in order to respond to their context and to make the National Health Observatory a real tool for strategic intelligence in health. So uh, AFRO uh, support is uh, a concurrent rollout of IAHO to all the member states. There is advocacy amongst country stakeholders for observatory as the comprehensive source of health information in the country. And there is also support in terms of capacity building for data analysis, information and knowledge generation and uploading data through the data capture tool. It was for certain countries with existing national health observatories, uh, AFRO offers support transition to IAHO and support the linkage of national health observatories to the IAHO through an API. There's also biannual data support for consolidation and verification of existing data. Thank you very much, uh, Serge. I will actually speak English because we have balance. Uh, we will now share a video presentation with you. I'm going to switch presentations. All right, it's going to begin now. Every day, a vast amount of information on health is produced and collected across the African region. Once gathered, reliable data forms a basis upon which to define and understand health issues, establish what needs to be improved, and ultimately deliver better services more effectively, efficiently, and equitably. To capture an accurate picture of the health situation, data must be collected in a timely and accurate manner and appropriately stored in a common format allowing for comparability. This can be a challenge for some countries, particularly those with fragile health information systems. Due to issues with design, funding, and management, these gaps affect health systems overall. As a result, communities are unable to obtain the quality health care they need without incurring financial hardship. Beyond data and statistics, health information also includes analytics and knowledge. Analytics products give us a better understanding of why we are observing particular health trends and provide actionable insight on their implications. Knowledge translation and production is used to synthesize and package information for policy and decision-making at different levels. 
research and knowledge work hand in hand. One role of the World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa is to help bring all of this information together for use in planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation of health interventions. It also provides opportunities for member states and communities to learn from each other's experiences and set goals and priorities to ensure better health and well-being for African populations. To facilitate this process, WHO Afro hosts a web-based online platform known as the Integrated African Health Observatory. Available in English, French, and Portuguese, the platform is a one-stop shop that marshals harmonized high-quality data and evidence from the regional stage, together with the national health observatories of the 47 member states. The Integrated Observatory supports the exchange of good practices and lessons learned, building and sustaining expert networks across the region. It contains a number of embedded platforms for health actors, researchers, and decision makers to engage on evidence through social media and policy dialogue events. Its digital library offers access to scientific and technical health information. Supporting the production of high quality data and evidence to strengthen public health, the Integrated African Health Observatory is the first stop for reliable information on health throughout the African region. Switch again. We hope you were able to see uh, the video. I heard that there are some issues with blurriness, but hopefully you got the message. The video is on the landing page of the observatory and we'll also share it again um, afterwards. To the event. All right. So our next uh, our next session is going to be a discussion uh, by some experts at the regional office uh, on the central problems in health information. And so, as Serge said earlier, health information is the big umbrella, but underneath it we have data, analytics, and knowledge. And so. These issues, um, some of the issues that tend to come up uh, for data and statistics include challenges of data availability and access to accurate, high quality, and up-to-date information across the African region. In terms of analytics, that is uh, capacity building. Well, we'll talk a little bit about capacity building and already existing uh, skills in analysis in the region and then different challenges and opportunities. The observatory is meant to be a space for all of this type of uh, work, whether it be um, system reviews, sector reviews, um, that kind of thing. And then knowledge and evidence. So ways of making, um, in this particular presentation, we'll talk a bit about ways of making health policy and systems research, as well as other knowledge resources for evidence-informed decision-making more visible and accessible on a global level. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Benson. He's going to take us through how the Yahoo responds to the need of ac accessing accurate, high quality and up-to-date data in the region. So over to you, Dr. Benson. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Aminata, can you confirm if uh, you're able to hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Excellent. Yeah, thank you and uh, good afternoon, um, colleagues. So I will uh, briefly talk about uh, the key issues uh, affecting the data availability and quality in the African region. I'm sure these are issues that you understand very well uh, because uh, it's the same issues that you deal with in your day-to-day -day activities. And you'll agree with me when I say that uh, data availability and the quality uh, in the African region uh, are generally very poor. And I can give some specific examples 
Uh, one is that uh, Serge talked already about some of the data sources. So we have the routine data. These data are readily available. Uh, of course, the challenges uh, you all know is that they are often beset with uh, data quality problems. Uh, as uh, evidenced by the recent challenges we have had with the COVID, death data and also cause of death data are actually one area where the African region has done extremely poorly. These data are extremely scarce. Where the data available, we don't know uh, really the causes of the death because uh, medical certification of cause of death is not really done in uh, most of our healthcare facilities. Even where they are done, the certification is often not correctly done. So this is a very big area where really we, we need to actually work hard to strengthen uh, the health information system to improve uh, the reporting of deaths and causes of death. Administrative data, these are data about the human resources, the financing infrastructure and so on. These data are actually available in the countries, but often very difficult to access. And when you come across them, they are not updated at all. And uh, they also prone to a number of errors. Then we have the facility assessment, such as the harmonized health facility assessment, previously what we refer to as SARA, uh, the service provision assessment data. These data are just available in very few countries. Many countries don't actually or haven't ever done any of these facility-based assessments. Population-based surveys, the quality of these data are generally good, but again, data are not available. The surveys are not done. Only a few countries try to do this population-based surveys. Then we have data from uh, agencies such as WHO, IHME, World Bank, and so on. These are the data many countries actually fall back to because they are always available. Uh, actually, if you go to the WHO database, you'll find a lot of data on our countries. These data are modeled estimates. Uh, they don't really tell you about the facts on the ground. They just give you an indication of what potentially could be happening uh, in your countries. Then we have been uh, with my colleagues to a number of countries. And one thing that has actually come out very clearly is that many countries are struggling with reliable denominator data. You find when they compute the coverage of some interventions, such as immunization, you find uh, coverage of 200%, coverage of 300%, above 100%, which indicates, of course, when you ask the countries why the coverage rates are way higher than what they really should be, or why they're way higher than 100%, often the answer you get is that it is uh, uh, clients from the neighboring countries that cross over to access the services. But that really is not true because we know the biggest challenge uh, in the countries actually is the challenges related to the denominator data. So these are data that are usually estimated by the National Statistics Office. And uh, where population-based censuses are done, you tend to have more stable population denominator data. But where the census are not done, then you, you are often off the mark uh, with that. Of course, the issue of challenges with internet and so on, these are all uh, challenges that countries face related to data. So let's look at, uh, next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So uh, there are several reasons that affect the availability and the quality of data. I can only mention a few of them. I'm sure you know all of them because these are the same thing that you did with us, I mentioned earlier. The first is the fragmentation of the national health information system. In most of our countries, we have very many players. We have very many data systems that operate independently of each other. These data are also captured in different formats. They're stored in different locations and managed by different authorities. Actually, uh, in a number of countries, when an assessment or a review of health sector strategic plans are done, the ministry even has to beg some, some of the players or some of the author, I mean, uh, authorities of this data for data to be used to assess the progress and performance of the health sector strategic plans. That shouldn't really be the case because every data in each country should really be 
uh, coordinated by the Ministry of Health and also should be owned by the Ministry of Health. Then uh, in most cases, we don't really have proper standards to collect our data. Yeah, I can say, I think in Africa region, we have um, uh, less than 10 countries that, that have attempted to use international classification of disease. This is quite challenging because where you don't have the data standards, you have the same condition being referred to in different ways. So because they're referred in different ways, it means you cannot uh, count all the cases that are available. So there is potential for gross underreporting uh, where data standards are actually not used. Then many countries also have policies that restrict access to data. You look at the various uh, documentation around data sharing, it is clear that they have a policy where data should be shared. But in practice, actually, data is not being shared by many of the players in the country, including the country governments. So this affects access to data to people who really will need to use that data. Often we confuse data access with data security or data safety. It is important for countries to maintain security of the data, but the data should be made available to people who need to use it to generate further information to support decision making at various levels, not just at policy level or program level, but also at individual level. Then we have the burnout, burnout issues among the health workers. Now, we, I mentioned earlier that there is a lot of fragmentation of the national health information system, and this fragmentation occurs at higher level. But on the ground, the data actually are collected by the same health workers. So you find, I'm sure you know this, in many of your countries, health workers are reporting to so many partners and that burns them out completely because the burden of reporting is so huge. It is something really that under the Integrated African Health Observatory, what we try to do is to bring these issues out and see how we can harmonize the systems uh, to reduce on the reporting burden on the health workers who are on the ground. An assessment that WHO did about uh, three or four years ago actually showed that in the African region, health workers are spending up to a third of their time just trying to fill uh, the registers and the reporting forms, which shouldn't really be the case. Then use of paper-based systems in many of our countries, we're not yet using electronic systems. So the paper-based systems are cumbersome as you are all aware, and they're prone to errors, and also they're prone to delays in reporting. And then we have the issues around uh, lack of integrated systems for collection, storage, and transmission of data. So this really speaks to also the use of fragmentation of the national health information system. Limited skills in analysis and synthesis of data, including analysis of data quality. So it is one area which actually has been a great focus for the observatory, especially the work around the national health observatories, is to strengthen skills at, at the country level to analyze data, interpret it, and also communicate that through the uh, observatory. Then many countries don't really have schedules for data collection. Even where the schedules exist, they don't adhere to these schedules. One reason is that there's no clear data architecture framework in each of the countries. Many countries don't also have HIA strategic plans that will actually help guide on what data should be collected. Even where countries have developed an M&E framework, you actually find that, uh, I beg your pardon, Sorry, about, sorry about that. Uh, you find uh, that in 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 many countries, uh, even where they develop an M and E framework, there are no mechanisms put in place to collect data for each of the indicators that an M and E framework. So during uh, activities such as uh, midterm review of sector strategic plans or end term evaluations you find the countries are struggling to access data. They are just beginning to even to mine data. So that is a very big challenge that really affects uh, some of the issues related to availability and equality uh, of the data in the countries in the African region. 
Next slide. Next slide. So what will be the role of the integrated Africa Health Observatory? So Saj has already explained to you uh, what an integrated Africa Health Observatory is. And just to add perhaps that the work with the health observatories in the African region is not something that is new. It is something that started uh, almost 10 years ago uh, under the primary health care. And of course that time it was meant to monitor uh, the region's progress towards the uh, uh, Millennium Development Goals. So it has transformed quite a bit. We learned a lot from the previous experiences and the previous experiences led us to come up with the Integrated Africa Health Observatory platform that we're talking about today. So it really helps if you have an observatory or if you are using an observatory in your country, you are able to assemble your data from different sources and store them in one location. And this is particularly important where you are doing an assessment, as I mentioned earlier, like a midterm review of sector strategic plan. You don't spend a lot of time and money looking for data because data will be sitting already in the observatory. So that's one reason why the Integrated Africa Health Observatory is important. And perhaps also to just emphasize the, the point that Sarge already may, may, uh, made, the Integrated Africa Health, Health Observatory, as opposed to the previous model that we used, is that um, in this platform, all the data are sitting in one place. All the observatories for all the countries are sitting in one platform. That makes it very easy for people to navigate and also do cross-country comparisons and also access data of other countries uh, which they can use to inform their own activities. So that's really a very big advantage of having this integrated platform. You really need to play with it and you'll see, you'll appreciate the beauty. I think we have talked about this for quite some time now. And many of you who are on the panel, I mean, who are in attendance today, I'm sure have also participated in the previous discussions or webinars we have had on the Integrated African Health Observatory. Health observatories help to strengthen schemes for analysis of health data and their quality. I've already mentioned this. It is one of the key activities that the observatory team does is training the countries on analyzing the data, on how to do data quality analysis, and how to interpret the results, how to present the results. So it is one of the key activities that the observatory team has done in a number of countries and will continue to do. Through increasing access to health data, a health observatory facilitates use of data for decision making. And this is one of the key functions. And also you agree with me when I say where data are being used the quality of data often also improve. Where data not used, no one really pays attention. So by bringing data closer to the key actors in the country, we think that actually through the observatory, the availability and the quality of data in the country is going to improve just because people will pick interest in the data and they start using the data. And when they're using it, they'll be asking for data, they'll be asking for better data in the state. So health observatories are open access platforms and therefore ideal for reaching the, reaching the public with information and evidence. Often when we go to countries, we are asked to explain the difference between an observatory and a platform like DHIS2. You'll agree with me when I say that the DHIS2 is only meant for a few people within the Ministry of Health. Not even everyone within the Ministry of Health can access DHIS2. It is a closed platform, not open access. Because for one to access a DHS2 platform, you need a password, which has to be prepared for you and given to you by the admin. But with observatory, no password is required. All that is required is for you to access the platform and use it. Of course, we do have some features where passwords are needed. For instance, the Integrated Africa Health Observatory has three key components. One of the components is what we call a data capture tool. This is the tool that countries use to put the data into the regional data warehouse, which is the second platform, part of the integrated uh, platform. And then you have the web interface that everyone accesses. For you to be able to put data into the warehouse and then onwards to the uh, public interface, you need to have the permission to do that. So that's only a place where we have the restriction in access to 
uh, the Integrated African Health Observatory. And one of the key activities of the observatory, uh, which uh, uh, Sarge and I'm not really have been actively involved in is the area of policy dialogue events. It is one of the key activities of the uh, African Health Observatory. We have done this already with five countries and we hope we are going to increase this. Uh, we are working with five uh, public health and academic institutions uh, across the region, each country with one institution so far, uh, trying to bring evidence closer to the key actors to facilitate decision making. So this is one key role that observatory really plays. It's again improving use of information. And as I mentioned, where data have been used, the quality will improve, the availability also will improve. Then upon request, health observatories help generate and provide evidence to support day-to-day -day decision making by policymakers. This is something we really want to go to. Of course, uh, I can't uh, underscore the challenges related to this uh, because I know in the European region, for instance, they have something uh, where if a minister is going to give a speech in the next two to three hours, he will say, can we get this information from the observatory or can the observatory quickly team will quickly do a, a synthesis and give some information. This is quite challenging because it requires a very strong human resource uh, for the observatory. But when we work together as, as a team, uh, I mean, not I talked already about having a community of practice. I think this is something we can look forward to and it will be possible for us to do that. Then health observatories are a platform for learning and sharing experiences across countries. I already talked about the feature where all the observatories of each country are sitting in one platform. And where they're sitting in one platform, we have a function that enables you to do cross-country comparison. You can easily dash from one platform to the to, to, to I mean, from one country's observatory to, uh, to another country's observatory. And when you're able to do that, it means you're able to actually quickly uh, pull data together, see what other countries are doing, learn from their actions uh, uh, and, and their activities as well. So that really is where observatory helps quite a lot. So I will stop here. I think, uh, I'm not, I, I hope there's another slide after this. So I will stop here and uh, hand over back to uh, Aminata. Thank you, and over to Thank you. Thank you very much, Benson, um, uh, for taking us through that. Um, now we're going to dive into the analytics perspective, and this will be presented by Regina Titiofe, our information analytics officer. Thank you very much, Aminata. So going into the issues relating to analytics in the region, I think we would like to situate, as uh, my previous presenters have established, the observatory provides a platform around which all the analytical products and work on generating analytics in the region can be housed. Across the region, the key issues that we see in terms of um, capacity for generating good quality health um, health analytics include capacity for using data from routine health information systems to inform analytical products across various themes, including health systems performance, health systems functionality, and to use the information being generated from these routine systems with respect to diseases and trends in disease, um, trends in diseases to inform policy action. Secondly, we see that across the region, there's a need for us to strengthen capacity for surveillance of health service continuity using geospatial analytical methods um, through ge geographical information systems, as well as other analytical approaches which we can use to actually generate intelligence and knowledge on disruptions across essential health services. And this has come out quite critically in the context of COVID-19 where we see that across the region, we have lacked quite critically in essential analytics and insights into how services are being disrupted um, as a result of the pandemic. Thirdly, we see a key issue regarding analytics in the region as um, one where we can improve the quality of our sector reviews, program reviews, and other analytical products in the, um, in, in the health sector 
by including more analytical lines and um, inferential approaches to anal analyzing the data beyond just the descriptive reporting that we have typically observed across many sector review processes in the region. Another key issue or aspects that we think um, we could uh, remain to be improved and has some scope of improvement in the region is around modeling of um, disease outbreaks, trends in transmission and spread, and looking at how we can leverage stronger analytics and statistical approaches to actually predict um, disease outbreak, outbreaks and put us in a position where we are better prepared to respond. Next slide. In thinking through the role of the Integrated African Health Observatory in strengthening these issues identified, we see the IAHO as a one-stop shop where analytical products across the region, including systems performance reports, SDG progress reports, sector review documentation, and other key analytical products can be housed. Such a platform provides an opportunity for countries to learn from each other and to see the kind of documents and products that are coming out from peer countries where they can potentially learn and strengthen their own capacities for analytics as a result of the emerging evidence from other countries. Secondly, secondly the observatory provides a dashboard and um, the opportunity for countries to observe interactive visualizations and see how the data that is being generated from their systems can be converted into interactive and easily consumable products for the purposes of policy action. And we see that the observatory has done this quite well on their dashboards where they have SDG trackers and other visualizations that are using data from countries to, to generate quite crystal clear visualizations that can be used for policy action. The observatory also serves as a platform for cross-country lesson sharing, as I earlier established, and I think Benson and Sergio Laminata have also established this, on how we can see what is going on in other countries and take the opportunity to strengthen our own capacities in countries, learning from the lessons of others. It also serves as a repository for regional data and analytical products, as we earlier established, and increasingly also houses proposed methodologies and regional public health goods on how we can analyze routine health data and other data sources to be able to generate intelligence and insights that will support us on the path to achieving universal health coverage. I'll now hand over back to Aminata. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Regina. Um, excellent. Uh, we'll now move into knowledge and knowledge slash research as these go hand in hand. All right, so Dr. Joseph will take us through uh, how the Yahoo promotes, uh, how the Yahoo promotes visibility um, globally and facilitates access to health policy and systems research and other knowledge yeah. resources. Yeah, uh, thank um, you very much. My colleagues have uh, laid the background. It's all uh, issue of data, data, uh, and use of data to inform uh, policy and action. Um, we, we know that um, the availability of uh, sound data, information, research evidence is critical for uh, health policy formulation. And of course, um, in the case of uh, attaining the WHO goals of universal health coverage and SDGs, uh, the importance of uh, accessing data cannot be overemphasized. And this is why in 2015, the member states of the WHO African region uh, endorsed the, uh, the research for health strategy for African region which spans from 2016 to 2025. It is hoped that within this period, uh, research capacity and the use of evidence and information for health policy making would have been strengthened 
in the African region. And um, of course, we begin to get uh, country-led research and also begin to see policies that are evidence-driven within the region. And um, also strengthening of links between health policy practice and uh, product of research is also considered one of the very critical core goals of research for health strategy in the African region. Um, we, we know that um, timely availability of content specific information is however rare in the African region. Uh, we find that while a range of health research evidence is produced and processed for use globally, uh, health policies in the region are suboptimally informed by evidence. And uh, this is uh, blamed on the access to available evidence. Uh, the performance of a routine um, health information system in the African region, especially at the sub-national levels, have been limited by institutional and technical capacity. Uh, we find that country capacity for civil registration, for instance, like uh, and vital statistics, like uh, Benson mentioned earlier on, is poor and with haphazard and low scale uh, registration of vital events. Uh, Benson has uh, talked lightly on the registration of deaths, for instance. Uh, national reporting rates and timeliness of data are poor. And data capture in the national health information system are hugely, you know, uh, about public health facility data and uh, of very low uh, usage to community and to private sector data, especially for profit for health. You know, so uh, these are uh, issues that we found to be militating against the use of uh, research evidence uh, for health policy. And we think, uh, to, next slide, please. Yeah, so we think that uh, these are issues that the integrated African Health Observatory will help us to resolve, you know, uh, principally making it possible for people to easily access uh, existing evidence, uh, which hitherto was difficult to, to get. So the Integrated African Health Observatory, uh, just like the health observatory we had before, which uh, Benson uh, referred to, but this time uh, with the integration of having everything in one place, we, we not only provide a web-based open access uh, to evidence, but we also uh, provide a one-stop shop for routine health information and um, e-health in the African region, including medical information, telehealth, and uh, mobile health. So, you know, you, the, the observatory will give us this opportunity of getting every information we want in one platform without having to run a uh, health scatter looking for evidence from time to time, which uh, gets the uh, health providers and practitioners frustrated and as such, uh, formulate their policies based on uh, half-baked uh, evidence. It will also facilitate a wide and timely dissemination of quality health data and information in our region, uh, thereby uh, facilitating the robust formulation of health policies to guide practice in the region. It will facilitate the tracking of progress towards universal health coverage and uh, sustainable development goals, among other national and regional priorities that are dependent on uh, evidence in the region. In terms of research assets, the Integrated African Health Observatory will be indispensable to you know, provision of evidence or information on the health research barometer and monitoring of national health research systems in the region. At the point of endorsement of the strategy for health research in 2015, the member states also 
mandated the WHO to monitor progress towards uh, national health research systems and uh, towards uh, ensuring that country-led research is, uh, becomes a norm in the, in the region. So we developed uh, the health barometer. The health barometer monitors the progress towards uh, uh, development of national health research systems in the region. Um, this, with the observatory and placement, we, we conduct this assessment every two years. And uh, with the observatory, we, we have a platform where we can deposit the data and the reports on this uh, uh, assessment. And uh, it will provide, it will help to increase cross-country comparison on the uh, performance of national health research systems. For instance, it will be easy to know which countries are funding research, which countries are making use of research products, which countries are, you know, uh, you know have a robust governance system for research within their countries and compare among countries. And the kind of, there will also be opportunity for peer learning. So countries that don't have will be able to learn from those that have because the data will be uh, placed in the health observatory. Then there's also the, the, the scope for more investment in disseminating the outputs of research efforts, especially with collaborative initiatives that emphasize the networking and sharing function of the integrated African Health Observatory. Uh, for instance, we have the African Health Observatory platform on health systems and policies. And we can also have this on uh, other areas of uh, work like uh, research, and of course, on um, evidence-informed policies, uh, network in the different uh, countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph. So um, you'll all see that, you know, our, our colleagues kind of took us through the different dimensions through which we can interpret and take a look at health information um, and the different ways in which they can display on the observatory. Uh, we hope that this will be a useful tool uh, to kind of resolve the issues that were raised through the, the three dimensions, namely data, analytics, and knowledge and research. Um, and so at this point, so now we're going to answer some questions. I see that um, my colleague Serge has been very active in answering the questions in the, in the, um, the Q&A. Uh, let me start with one that I think has not been answered yet. Uh, I will read in French. <clears throat> Il n'y a que 24 pays membres. Quels sont les défis? Au there are only uh, 47 member states. What are the challenges of, in terms of operation and what can we do to encourage other countries to engage? How uh, can WHO support the initiative? This could, this could be answered by uh, Serge, Benson, Regina, or uh, Dr. Joseph. Aminata, I think I'll respond to that one. Okay, super. I'm going to answer this one. I was already typing in the chat. Thank you for the question. First of all, we need to have engagement at a strategic level. We need a cooperation. Uh, that uh, uh, can help uh, strategic initiatives. There are uh, many trainings uh, available. There are 24 countries that are engaged, 24 countries with which we have started discussions. Some of them have already started the process. What the country office can do is to uh, is to launch a conversation with the Ministry of Health. We can have bilateral consultations and also give uh, presentations on how we can implement uh, the program. It's uh, also a matter of in institutionalization. 
I uh, it uh, it has to be maintained so that it is always credible. Thank you. Thank you, Serge. I see another question about um, human resources for health, and maybe you can touch on uh, the health workforce observatory. But let me read the question. It's a question in French. Bonjour, oui. Monsieur. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, let me just read it out loud. Bonjour, Monsieur, Madame. Pouvez-vous? Um, good morning, everyone. Can we concentrate on uh, health, human resources, uh, critical information? What are the tools for data management for this new uh, integrated African Health Observatory? Thank you. Yes, thank you for the question. In fact, the challenges for human resource data are the same challenges like Benson explained. Generally speaking, there is a lot of data that exists in countries, in PCs or laptops, but the information and the analysis that has to be generated from that doesn't exist. And so we need to analyze the data and we need to include that on a platform that is accessible, accessible to everyone. It's true that there are ongoing processes today. WHO has set up tools for data collecting and some countries are implementing that so that they can have very clear information in terms of human resources. It is also support from the WHO regional uh, office so that the countries have a better knowledge of their resources. Thank you. I'm going to read two questions and then uh, maybe we start with uh, Dr. Benson and then uh, see who else can chime, chime in. So the first one is, how do you see this process as improving quality of data collected? And then the second question is, oh, well, first there's a comment. Thank you for this great presentation on a very important and strategic initiative. Can you please advise how implementing partners can engage with the observatory? Specifically, IntraHealth International is increasing its focus on HRH data collection, analysis, and use. We would like to contribute to this initiative. As noted earlier, National Health Workforce accounts, uh, NHWA is a clear model. We are also supporting many countries with their use of I. HRIS. So, and then uh, another question just came in, which I will read in French. Comment l'initiative va appuyer les pays à disposer? How is the initiative going to help countries in order to better manage their data? Over. So, uh, maybe that, ben, Benson, you can start with the, the first question. I'm not a thank you. Uh, if you can just repeat the question um, once more, please. Sure. Sure. So the first question had to do with how does this process um, improve quality of data collection? And then the uh, the second question is kind of linked. Um, you know, they're talking about how implementing partners can engage. Uh, and and an example was cited of a partner that works on data collection, analysis, and use. So how do partners figure into this conversation? Okay. No, thank, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you uh, for that question. It's a, a very important question, how the observatory uh, can contribute to improving the quality of uh, data. Uh, there is a framework that Sarge presented. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you can recall. Uh, and the summary of that framework was that implementation of the integrated African Health Observatory should be within the overall framework of the national health information system. In fact, uh, whenever we support the countries to implement a national health observatory, we look at the overall framework of the national health information system, starting with the issues of governance uh, for health information system. Under governance, there are so many other activities that you can unpack that include 
uh, having uh, policies and the frameworks and the strategies available, the issue of bringing the partners together, the issue of resource mobilization, both human and financial, and so on. These are the, and also the issue of data standards. These are issues that come under uh, the governance issues. And then we have the system for generating storage and transmission of data. Then we have the capacity for analysis and synthesis of data and then the communication and use. So the observatory is, you can say it is, it comes towards the end, but it is not like that. It actually it is a cyclical kind of uh, relationship. You cannot implement an observatory if you don't have a very strong system of governance for health information system. You cannot implement a, a, an observatory if you don't have very strong systems for data generation. And also you cannot implement an observatory if you don't have a strong system or strong capacity for data analysis, including data quality analysis. So all these pillars of national health information system help to, if they are functioning optimally, they help to improve both the availability and the quality of the data. So the observatory targets all these areas from governance to data generation, data analysis, information and knowledge generation and then communication. So we look at observatory as part of this process. So that's really how uh, it helps to uh, uh, improve the quality of the data because there'll be activities that are targeting governance issues. We want the governance to be functioning, systems, which data are being collected, which sources of data, which mechanisms are used to collect data and so on. So we do all this as part of observatory. So how can the partners come in? WHO's work, one of the primary activities of WHO is engaging partners and aligning them around country priorities for national health information system. And this is one of the strategic uh, objectives of the transformation agenda for WHO, engaging with the partners and all other key actors at country level also at international level to support efforts for strengthening the national health information system. So that is not different when we're talking about the National Health Observatory. In fact, in a number of countries, I remember in Cameroon, when Saj was still in Cameroon, we did a lot of engagements with partners, including GIZ, CDC. We had a lot of meetings and these are the partners that were driving the NHO uh, National Health Observatory agenda in Cameroon. And it's the same case in all the countries because a National Health Observatory is not only meant for the Ministry of Health. It is meant to be used by all the actors in health and also all the beneficiaries of health that include the citizens of the country and also elsewhere. So partners have a role to play in all the processes of the National Health Observatory, and actually we always make sure that we engage with the partners in this. So actually one thing that we often uh, do at the country level is to is do what we call partner mapping, uh, to see which partners can help contribute to uh, establishment and implementation of National Health Observatory. It will be a collaborative effort at the country level to uh, both implement and also of course use the integrated ha uh, Africa Health Observatory. I hope I've been able to answer those two questions. Over to you, Aminata. Thank you very much, Benson. Thank you. I think that that covers a lot of the questions. Uh, I think I saw some research-related questions, but I think they've been answered. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'll just uh, just say a quick comment, and then I'll I'll hand over to Serge uh, for for concluding remarks. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, it's it's wonderful to see people engaging on this. This is a very important issue. Um, you know, without health information, it becomes very difficult to actually plan and to make decisions. And so, you know, in in conceptualizing the nat the national health observatories, it's important to be mindful of, you know, setting down very clear foundations for data, as well as analytics, which is basically taking that data and and trying to figure out why. You know, why are we seeing these things and, and what can we do about it? But then also, you know, the, the last pers perspective that often tends to be, or, or it tends to be discussed in different fora, but it, but, you know, all of this comes together as health information or strategic health intelligence, we can say, um, is knowledge, right? And so that's, that's 
packaging that information in a way that's easy for, for policymakers and decision makers to actually do something with. So um, yeah, I think that's just a final note for, from me. I'm going to hand over to Serge and Serge will give us concluding remarks and, and then close the meeting. Thank you. Over to you, Serge. Thanks, Abhidatta. I'm not sure of the word to do concluding remark. Anyway, thank you all for attending this webinar. And uh, I, I hope you are going to visit the new Integrated African Health Observatory. WHO Regional Office for Africa is at your disposal, all the member states and all the partners also, to continue to advance this agenda and also to enable countries to use this tool in the monitoring and implementation of the global health agenda for healthier and fairer world. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Aminata? Thank you. Thank you. And just to answer some of the questions about presentations and, and video, we will, share, we will share the presentation in English, French, and Portuguese, as well as the recordings in the three languages. And um, we'll also share the video um, from the video presentation. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.